Seriously, dude? I don't know if I even have the energy for this shit today. But let's give it a shot. Cumbia! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Time Machine. I'm Harper, and there is no script for this video. So let's just make it up as we go. Today I'm doing some exploration, some reconnaissance for which art style I want to use for an upcoming comic project. That's right, a comic project. And the story that I'm working on is a thriller slash horror sort of 60s, 70s era Amityville slash Rosemary's Baby kind of a thing. Okay, first I started off with some collage in the background. That's just some torn pages out of books. I just wanted a little texture to start with. And then after that, I laid down some thin layers of gesso on top of that and then added a little bit of uh, watercolor for a little more depth. And then just wrote out longhand with an HB pencil some psycho babble BS to give us some noise, some word noise in the background. Let's go ahead and draw in the large image of the woman on the left. And I'm drawing it here, and it's looking okay. And then, boom, I changed it totally to something completely worse. <laughs> that is terrible. But let's move on. This is just a test page, right? Okay, laying down some washes of watercolor. Let's go ahead and use a heavy dark red for some spooky shadows. I'm going to make some random drawings and panels and then stick them all on a single page so I can get an idea of which style would look cool for the finished book. Need to darken up the uh, all of the colors of the hair and the skin and everything. It's looking very, very light right now, so let's darken those up. Go ahead and blot that eye out, and why not? Makes it look even spookier. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and collage down another couple pieces of paper for the panels here on the other side of the fake page. These drawings have nothing to do with the story. I just needed to draw something to use for this test. Oh, and the book won't be laid out in landscape format like this. It'll be portrait style, sort of standard comic book size. And then I'm going to put some thin washes of gesso on top of that to uh, draw in the panels. Let's add a little non-bleached white to this background to get a little more depth. And then, of course, got to do some flickety flick. All right, and what's happening in this section is I'm going to have a balloon right there and another balloon right there with the tail going off the page and then another balloon here and another one there and one more right there. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead and draw in these other three panels. Um, I traced a light version of each of these drawings down just for a little placement just to help me out on like where they could go in the actual panel. So now I'm just going to pencil over that real quick. Again, these are just fast drawings just to, just to use as a test. Okay, so maybe they're not that fast. Watching it back now. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. Yeah, I'm just drawing it in. Okay, now let's go ahead and use a kneaded eraser just to take that pencil down so it doesn't stick through so hard. And then add in a window, evidently. Okay, that's great. Some Venetian blinds. All right, then let's break out the nib and ink and go to town. Uh, I'm just making these very simple drawings. There's gonna be outlines because I'm gonna use some color washes uh, to make some tones, to give some some 3D effect. Or some shit like that, I don't know. Cool, drawing her in. There's an eyebrow. Let's go ahead and make this eye. I'm sure it'll be wonky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now I had a happy accident happen here and I had a blob, so I just took my finger and started squishing it up and it makes it look even spookier. Again, with the Venetian blinds, great, very, very important when it comes to making a comic. Gotta have Venetian blinds. Just check out Sin City if you don't believe me. All right, I'm gonna use a red wash on this panel just to set it apart. Um, you know, like this would be like an extra spooky panel or, you know, uh, a panel you wanted to bring some emphasis to. I'm gonna make the whole thing red, what the hell? Crazy! All right, and for this one, it's gonna be some Payne's Gray watercolor, that sort of uh, blue-gray that I love so, so much. Very plain, let's do the same thing here for this other panel, or this lady's jacket, or maybe that's a dude, I don't know. 
Again, just making up some drawings that don't make any sense. Just to use for a test. Adding some more tones here. This is not that exciting to watch, actually, now that I'm watching it. Wow. Okay. And let's break out the razor blade and make some spooky slash marks across the background. It's, uh, it's pretty spooky. I would say so. I would say it's pretty, pretty spooky. All right, I'm adding a little charcoal on my thumb there. And of course, we gotta drip some blood. For a horror and thriller comic, you gotta have some sort of blood, but that's too much blood, so let's dab it back. And then look at the mess I made. All right, let's fill in this eye, get it a little bit darker, get some pupil action happening. A little more flickety flick, which actually I, I think took away from the final, but we'll see. Let's put a highlight in this eye. So I'm liking how parts of this are looking so far. Uh, but remember, each panel was made as sort of its own mini test. So the page as a whole is slightly jarring. I didn't make it as a complete page, so it looks non-cohesive. And what's the art 100 word I'm looking for? Uh, b -b -b unity. That's right, unity. It's not a unified look. But we can cheat a unified look with a couple of clicks in Photoshop. So let's go there now through the magic of magic. Hubbling magical sound effects. So here's the original. It's got some promise to it, but what if we dropped a black and white filter on it to try to get some of that unity? We could still emphasize some of the panels with a pop of color, like the red panel here and the blood in the background, super spooky, but most of it would just be black and white. But we could also use a different tint color over that black and white for different scenes. Like what if a two page scene was like sort of a red tint and then the next scene is three pages or four pages and that's green and then we went back to the red and bippity boppity bacon bits, you get the idea. All right, next we could use a sepia filter to help unify things, and that looks pretty good. It's more unified, but we're starting to lose the depth in the background that the original has. Okay, let's see. We could also try a warming filter on top of everything. In this case, sort of a burnt orange color. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So with this particular disjointed fake non-page page that I just made up out of nowhere, I think this approach works the best to bring us some unity with the least amount of loss in coolness of the original background. You know, now I want to try another test page that's just drawn completely in pencil, no inks, and then just some washes of Payne's gray watercolor for some tones. But then the other side of my frosted mini wheat says, Dude, the splattery darkness of ink is so lush and at the same time volatile and oh, it'd be great, especially for this kind of a story. But, you know, I'll figure it out. That's what tests like this are for. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this project. You can expect to see more videos coming up about making comic pages and everything else that goes into putting a book together. <laughs> or I might just blow off the whole thing tomorrow. I guess we'll find out together. So until next time, for even more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and dad jokes, check out these rad videos right here. And if you thought this video was better than gaining 20 pounds over the holidays, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the Time Machine. Thank you so much for watching. Make it a great day.